السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس اوڈ یو آئی تھنک آل یو آر فائن الحمد للہ بائی دا گریس آف اللہ اینڈ آئی ایم آلسو فائن بائی اللہ مرسی پلیز پے فار آس پے فار ایوری بڈی ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ان آور ٹوڈیز کلاس وی ول ڈسکس اباؤٹ آور چیپٹر فائیو فسٹ تھری لیسن لیسن ون ٹو اینڈ تھری Chapter 5, its name is Model Lives. In this chapter 5, we will discuss about the biography of some Muslim scholars, biography of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, biography of the fourth caliphate of Muslim Ummah. And before discussion of all the biographies, at first we will discuss about model. What is model? According to your textbook, the word Uswa, it is an Arabic word. Its meaning is model. That is in Arabic, Uswa, and in English, it's model. So, meaning of the word Uswa is model. Who is model for us? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best model for us. According to Al-Quran, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the only and the best model for all the human being of the world. According to Al-Quran, Allah says, Allah declared in the Holy Quran, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Laqad kana lakum fi rasulillah uswatul hasana. Surely, in the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have the best model. So, as Allah declared in Al-Quran, even if we study the biography of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will see only the biography of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the biography of the world where there is no defect, where, is, where there is no shortcomings. Even you know, uh, Dr. Maurice Bukaili composed the book The Hundred and there, there uh, he mentioned Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the best man, as the best among the hundred special men of the world. So, the non-Muslims also declared, recognized, acknowledged that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the best model for us. So, before discussion of this biography, uh, we will discuss about the condition of Ayyam al-Jahiriya, condition of the Arab during the advent of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa during the advent of Islam. Dear students, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in a situation when the people of Arab were engaged in all types of inhumanism, all types of barbarism, decority, murder, snatching, cruelty, even no types of inhuman activities were raised. What is not done by the people of that people, that uh, people of Arab of that is. And in that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to remove this darkness. And that is why that is, is called Ayyam Jahiliya. Ayyam means age, Jahiliya means ignorance. So Ayyam Jahiliya means the age of ignorance. As the people of Arab are engaged in Jahiliya, in ignorance, in barbarism, in the darkness of all types of civil, uh, uncivilized activities, that's why that age is called Ayyam Jahiliya. And to remove this darkness of inhumanity, remove this darkness of that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And another question, right on the social condition of pre-Islamic Arabia, that means what was the social condition? The students, in a word, we can see that there were no good social activities. So, no civilized activities, no human activities, no good or formal activities of that is only might is right was the motto, was the main philosophy of their life. That means human of that is were engaged in inhumanity and cruelty, decorating, murdering, all types of inhuman activities, unsocial activities were prevailed. Even we know the status of women. Women who are not uh, get any types of dignity of that case. 
they had no dignity as human being even even uh, being the birth of a female child it was a matter of shy for the father because the father thought that this daughter child may cause any trouble for his life may cause any types of shy or shame for his life that's why sometimes the father of daughter child used to bury their child daughter child lively after just after being their birth so this types of inhuman and cruel activities were against this women's society but islam has given the real dignity and real status to the women community so this was the social condition of that is now the cultural condition of pre islamic era began. there were no good culture or no good cultural activities cultural practice uh, were available in their society all types of nasty all types of dirty all types of uh, uh, negative activities all types of uh, uh, indecent activities unjust activities and courteous activities in modest activities are available in their society their culture was only they were fond of literature only one quality are available in their culture that they had the ability of making uh, good literature their literary feats feats were uh, recognition uh, in all over the world even they used to compose poems we know hookah square used to arrange on the ground of kaaba every year and in that hookah square they used to present their personal composed poems and among all the poems seven most important and most famous poems used to hang on the wall of kaaba as a recognition as a reward and these seven hanging poems used to call al sabaul muallaka al sabaul muallaka seven hanging poems al sabo means seven al muallaka means hanging poems so this was the cultural activities of pre islamic arabia now dear students we will discuss about the lesson 2 holy prophet hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's birth childhood and adolescence the at first the birth and childhood of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam dear students all of you know about the biography about the uh, common information of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's biography more or less so only i will try to say the basic import, uh, informations that are important for your exam Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born in Quraysh tribe on 570 AD or CE. Quraysh tribe 570 AD or CE. We know Prophet Muhammad sallallahu's father's name was Abdullah. His mother's name was Amina. His grandfather's name was Abdul Muttalib. His uncle's name was Abu Talib. Rasul's paternal grandfather was Abdul Muttalib and maternal grandfather was Wahab. Maternal grandfather was Wahab. And the name Muhammad and Ahmad. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had two names. Muhammad this name was selected by his grandfather Abdul Muttalib and Ahmad this name was also our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this Ahmad was selected by his mother Amina so now we know prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam lost his father abdullah before his birth and at the age of 6 prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam lost his mother amina at the age of 8 hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam lost his grandfather abdul muttalib and then he was under the custody of abu talib who was the uncle of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam now after the birth of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent to hazrat halima tusadi radhiyallahu ta'ala's house hazrat halima 
took away Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Narsi. Hajat Halim radhi Allah ta'ala anha was from Banu Saad tribe. It's a question, Hajat Halima from which tribe? Hajat Halima was from Banu Saad tribe. And Hajat Halima radhi Allah ta'ala anha nursed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for five years. And during this nursing, during feeding the breast of Hajat Halima radhi Allah ta'ala anha, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to always suck his only one breast. Not others, because Prophet Muhammad Sallam, Allah has given this knowledge to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Hazrat Halima had another son named Abdullah. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to maintain this justice, this fair play here also. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala don't this mentality, this justiceful, this uh, uh, this balanceful mentality in his mind from this very childhood. So we can learn justice and fair play from this activities of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his childhood. And now, after the Hazrat Halima Radhi Allah Ta'ala, now we know Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after the death of Hazrat Amina, Rasulullah was under the custody of his grandfather Abdul Muttalib. When Abdul Muttalib was died at the age of eight, then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was under the custody of Abu Talib. He was the uncle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was the uncle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Abu Talib. And then the adolescence of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was started. In the house of Abu Talib, we know that Abu Talib he was not a Muslim. Abu Talib was the leader of Quraysh, but Abu Talib. Help Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Talib loved Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam too much. That's why Abu Talib didn't uh, uh, didn't uh, hand over Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the Quraysh of Ka to the Kafirs of Quraysh uh, during his lifetime. So in the house of Abu Talib, Abu Talib's economic condition was not good. Uh, uh, the son of Abu Talib, son of, son of uh, child of Abu Talib used to graze sheep, they used to do work in the, uh, in the harvesting field. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after going to the house of Abu Talib, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam helped his uncle Abu Talib in their uh, economic activities. Uh, for example, Rasulullah used to uh, graze sheep with his cousins uh, and he didn't uh, feel shy to do this test of activities as a cowboy or as a shepherd. So Prophet Muhammad Sallam is the model for the shepherds of all over the world. And even Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi helped Abu Talib during his business. Uh, at the age of eight, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went with Abu Talib to Syria for business purpose. And in their Syria, a Christian clergyman named Bahira when he saw Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam at Syria, he asked Prophet asked Abu Talib, who is he? Addressing to Prophet Muhammad, uh, pointing to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then Abu Talib said, he is my nephew. Then uh, this uh, Christian clergyman Bahira predicted that he is not any ordinary man. He will be the last prophet of the world. And this prediction of Bahira come down, uh, uh, come true after that. And after returning from Syria at the age of 12, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa saw a war named Harbun Fizar occurred between Quraysh and Kais tribe. Quraysh tribe was the tribe of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and Kais tribe was another tribe. And that Kais tribe imposed this war upon Quraysh tribe illegally. And this Harbun Fizar means unjust warfare or illegal war. As this Harbun Fizar uh, occurred uh, during a forbidden month, that's why this is called Harbun Fizar or unjust warfare. This war la la lasts for five years long. And by seeing the horror or uh, terrible situation of this uh, Harbun Fizar, Prophet Muhammad realized that. Uh, uh, realized that 
a social organization need to form by the help of all any other peoples of Arab, by the help of all any other young fellows of Arab. That's why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam formed helpful fuzul only to uh, confirm peace uh, in the society, only to uh, stop all types of war and unjust activities, and only to help the uh, oppressed people of the society. And it was the first organization of the world that was formed by a leader to, con to confirm social peace. That's why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's helpful fuzul is considered as the first social organization of the world. And by the help of this helpful fuzul, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam confirmed the uh, uh, confirmed uh, the peace and security of the society. And thus, this helpful fuzul is the pioneer organization of all the social organizations of the world. Dear students, helpful fuzul is most important for your exam and C and D type question comes from this helpful fuzul, background of forming helpful fuzul, uh, aim or activities of helpful fuzul, that is functions of helpful fuzul. And today's UN or today's United Nations or all any other social organizations of the world are owe or debt to this helpful fuzul of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear students, now we will Chapter 5, Lesson 3 Your Prophethood and Preaching of Islam of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Dear students, we know to all the peoples of Arab, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are known as al Ami, the most truthful person So, after hearing the fame of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hazrat Khadija Radiallahu Ta'ala who was a uh, rich woman of Medina, she was searching a trust man to maintain his business. Then after hearing the name of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Hadrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha invited Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and to test Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Hadrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha sent Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to Syria with his business trip. And in that trip, uh, Maisara, he was a trusted agent of Hazrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala Khadija radiallahu ta'ala sent Maisara with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as his agent and uh, to, uh, to inform Khadija radiallahu ta'ala about the character of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about the trust, about the honesty of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when? After returning from Syria to when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam presented his uh, his prophet and all the activities of that too, Hazrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala astonished by seeing the huge prophet, and then by the support of Maisara, Hazrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala informed that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a really true man, really an honest man. That's why Hazrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala decided that he will marry Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And in his days, he offered Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, to uh, to be the part of his life partner and along with his business. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam accepted it, but Rasulullah, uh, by the consent of Abu Talib, as Abu Talib was the uh, guardian of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so by the consent of Abu Talib, finally Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam married Hazrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala. Rasulullah's age was 25 and Khadija radiallahu ta'ala's age was 40 during their marriage. And then uh, by the help of the asset of Hazrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala, Prophet Muhammad sallam became the owner of a huge asset. But all these assets Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam donated for the welfare of humanity, not for his personal interest. And uh, next week, Hazri Aswad. When Prophet Muhammad sallam was at 35 years old, then uh, a dispute arose among the tribes of uh, tribes of Quraysh uh, uh, for establishing Hazri Aswad. Hazri Aswad is a black stone that came uh, that brought by Hazrat Adam sallam from Jannah, and it is near the Kaaba. While, uh, during the construction of Kaaba, this Hazri Aswad replacement was a matter of uh, dispute among the tribes of the uh, Quraysh. But Prophet Muhammad sallam solved this problem of Hazri Aswad. 
solve the establishment of, of Hazri Aswad with his good leadership, with his keen intellectuality. Thus, Prophet Muhammad sallam, proved that he is a great leader. And next, award of prophethood. The students, uh, we know at the age of 40, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam received his prophethood by the grace of Almighty Allah uh, in the night of Shabi Qadr uh, when his age was 40. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Zibreel alayhi salatu wasallam to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in that night Hazrat Zibreel alayhi salam uh, say, uh, came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in the cave of Hira and at, uh, said him Iqra bi ismi rabbika alladhi qala first five ayats of surah al-alaq Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at first said I don't know how to how to recite or read then Hazrat Zibreel alayhi salam embraced thrice or three times with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam then by the help of Allah the Most High, by the grace of Allah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa started to recite This first five ayat of Surah Al-Ala And after returning from the cave of Hira, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was afraid about his life And then he shared it with Hazrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala But by the mental support of Hazrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa relieved and Hazrat uh, Khadija said, Allah will not harm you as you, are, you always help to the people, to the human being. Thus, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wasallam started his preaching of Islam, the population of Islam. We know the first three years of Makki life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he propagated Islam, he praised Islam secretly or silently, only to his relatives, only to his friends, only to his family members. And Hazrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala was the first. Uh, receiver of Islam, Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and like these people, those who were close and nearest to one of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they only received Islam as Rasul uh, preached Islam silently and secretly during these past three years. And we know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam preached Islam in Makkah for 13 years. years. First for three years completely secretly and second uh, five years uh, also secretly and after completing five years Rasulullah started preaching of Islam directly and oftenly by the help of by the order of Allah the Most High. Thus Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam preached Islam. Please, students it is uh, all uh, of our today's lecture uh, so everybody uh, try to learn the lesson. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.